Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today I want to dive in and bring you on in-depth review on these tattoo supplies that I have right here in front of me. These boxes contain cohesive bandages as you can see and this bottom skin down here is a practice skin. More like a practice pad and it is a very big size pad. It's literally bigger than the table that I'm using. So I won't be able to get the entire thing on frame here. However, I'm going to do my best and review these products in depth so that way I can go ahead and put you all in front of them digitally. Without further ado, let's just dive into this. So as you see, there is several boxes and these supplies come from a company called Yolong Tattoo. I will leave links in the description below for you so you can go ahead and check out this gear on Yoren. If you're interested, you can go ahead and pick it up. I've been using these adhesive wraps right here for quite some time. As you can see, when you place an order, it comes in two boxes like this. I've already gone through several. This is not the first box either. I'm going to take them out and show you them up close as well, but I wanted to just show you the packaging for here. And these are straight off of Amazon as well. And again, from Yolong Tattoo. So is this practice pad down here. All of this is from Yolong Tattoo Supply. And it's just very straightforward boxing here. The contents, what matters is what's inside. As you can see right here, this one comes in a nice little box here. Comes in a set of six. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to show you what they look like. So let's take them out. And as you can see, these are nice little color uh, with like camo here, blue camo, or like standard camo. I'm correct, this is just a standard all black. This one is identical to what this box is. And then these are red. I'm excited to check out the red. For this video, I may use the red, but as you can see though, we do get an assortment of different colors when you get these cohesive bandages. And I, I use these every tattoo session. I wouldn't do a tattoo session without these. So I always need to have these available to me. As you see here though, very nice tattoos, uh, very nice cohesive wraps. I do like cohesive wraps or um, adhesive wraps with colors around them. I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of this one. This one's probably my favorite, the gray camo. So as you see though, it comes with a pack of six. And again, I am going to leave links in the description below for you so you can check this out on your end. That was the standard black one right here, as you see. Very cool and straightforward stuff. Let's put that one back in there as well. That is one of the boxes. So that's what this box consists of. And as you can see, they are on the packaging as well. For this black one that I've been using, this one again is almost done here. I have some more still in there, but this is just a straight black cohesive wrap right here, or adhesive wrap. I'm not sure any proper terminology, but I will get through this video calling it whatever comes first. And let me open this box right here so we can take a look at these right here. I'm going to grab just a CNC cartridge needle just to open up the tapes right here. And as you can see, these are vibrant red. Let's pull one out here and let's take a look at it. And as you can see, it's vibrant red here. It's a nice bright red. So I may use this one or that gray camo for this session. I do not know yet. So as you see though, you do get 24 wraps here and there is one layer and then there is another layer in the second box. Definitely worth the investment. I will leave links in the description below for you so you can check them out on your end. So that is a top layer as you saw there with the adhesives in there like so. And then the bottom layer is literally the exact same thing. They just tape two of these same boxes together. It also comes with the same amount as you see. So you, did get, you do get great value for the buck definitely worth the investment. I'm a big fan of the colors too. I like the color. They do offer purple, yellow, different colors as well. So I highly recommend to check these out. Now, just to confirm links for the adhesive wrap and this practice skin will be in the description below. So what we're gonna get into now is the Yolong practice pad that I have right here in front of me. I wanna see if I can give you all an accurate size the sizing here, but I don't have enough room on frame to actually give you all an accurate sizing but as you can see i put my hand down on it and this is a big piece of fake skin here as you see so it starts from here and then both sides end like that so there's multiple ways that you can approach this this is like literally one full frame of fake skin but as you see though this is a very big size fake skin so this is like to me i'm looking at this as a back 
this can be a chest piece whatever you want so it is dual sided if i'm correct we can tattoo both sides as you see the thickness is fairly thick right there so i believe it is going to be 15 by 20 if i'm correct yes so it's going to be 15 by 20 and three millimeters thick and this is the biggest size pad that i've ever picked up or had in my possession and i'm going to do this entire thing as if it was a back piece now i can use one side for an entire back piece and then i can use the other side for like two different chest pieces should i choose to do so i can do both sides as back pieces and get familiar with doing really big you know tattoos like that or i can use the entire pad and do just a whole bunch of little tattoos i'm not going to approach it the last way i'm not going to do a whole bunch of just little tattoos everywhere for me i want to optimize this and i want to make the most out of this specific pad so what i am going to do is i'm going to use this to do one full size tattoo i've already made a stencil as well for this specific pad right here and and which i will show you all we are going to take this out of the bag right here and we're going to take a closer look at the felt as well we're going to see how it reacts to the ink and we're going to do the full nine with this specific silicone skin as the video is going to be tailored to this specific product mostly now for the specific tattoo we're going to be doing this size right here so as you can see this took four different sheets of standard size of spirit paper so i did manage to zoom out a little bit to get a bit more eye view here as you can see so this is a pretty big stencil if i turn it this way we can pretty much get the entire thing on frame here let me actually move the stencil to the side and i'm going to you all the silicone skin again so we can get a better look at this and again this is from a company called yolong tattoo and this is literally a slab of skin at a very affordable price this is a big size of skin right here and again this is the biggest that i've had so how i'm going to approach this is i'm going to use this for the top side of course is going to be the neck it's going to be the bottom area there's many ways to use this you can use this however you'd like personally on your end but for me that's how i'm going to do it this is going to be the neck obviously because that looks apparent this is going to be the buttocks area as you see so it's a very big size piece of skin. I'm very eager to get into placing down the stencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some scissors or I'm actually just going to tear this open and we're going to take it out of the packaging. So I went ahead and I wiped the skin down with alcohol on a Scotch shop wipe. I just cleaned both sides to clean it up so that way it's ready for the stencil. As you can see though, this is a nice size slab of silicone skin. Let me bring it up close and this is, it has some weight to it. It's not light by any means it definitely has some weight to it here but as you can see though it's a nice smooth surface there's not too much texture on it and the thickness is so so it's three millimeters thick so i believe the thickness would allow us to tattoo both sides which to me is a great thing we are going to confirm that here throughout this video as well so as you can see, it is a nice size canvas here. This is almost a real size back piece right here, if I'm correct. Like this seems human size right here. Now the stencil that I made again, did take four standard size stencil papers to make. And it covers pretty much the entire area right here. So let's go ahead and get the stencil ready so that way we can place down the stencil. For those who are curious on how to make a stencil this big, drop a comment below and I'll go ahead and do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. I will go ahead and make a video on how I approach this like so. But as you all can see, so we're not gonna get the entire stencil on there simply because the silicone slab has you know, some curvatures right there. So we're just gonna do our best to kind of line the face up in the middle to line it up, you know, proportionate where we think and then we're just going to put it on there per usual. Now I'm going to stick with the same approach where I use speed stick and then I wipe off a certain amount until I'm comfortable with the amount that's on there. So we're going to continue with that workflow. We're going to use that process. I'm going to move that gigantic stencil over to the side here. Let me actually see if I can place it down to kind of mark it before I place it down. I don't really think that's necessary because as you see, there's a cross right here in the middle. So I'm just gonna use that and I'm going to put the point right in the middle. So 
So that's how we are going to approach that. So I figured we will test the skin as we go. For now, what we're gonna do is worry about placing the stencil on there correctly. We're going to allow it to dry and then we're going to come back and then test the skin, see how the ink wipes off and see how the stencil comes off and how it's stuck. We'll test it as we go. That's what I'm referring to. So again, I'm going to get the speed stick and I'm just going to start putting it on the entire canvas here. As you can see, some purple got on there. It wipes off fairly easy. Both sides seem to have these same sort of feel. So I'm not picky on which side I'm going to use. But as you see though, with that little excess purple that we got on there by accident, it cleans up pretty nice. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't seem too, too difficult. With a little bit of Vaseline, I'm just working it into the skin. And it definitely does come off. So that's definitely a good sign. So there is an accidental test right there. So let's proceed accordingly. Now I'm going to clean this as best as I can so that doesn't happen again. All right, so let's try this again. Okay, so I am comfortable with the amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a napkin, a new one, and I'm going to just simply wipe it across like you've seen me do if you've seen my how to apply stencil video. I'm going to approach it the same way and remove a necessary amount of excess is the way I'm going to word that. Now I have to be careful and I do keep my eye on this. I do put this under a light as it is easier to see the excess amount of or the amounts of speed stick on and when I'm doing this I'm just simply brushing over I'm not applying any pressure kind of letting the napkin do its job there So this looks about right. I, I don't want to have too much because I don't want the stencil to bleed and I don't want to have too little because I don't want it to be too light either. So as you see, we're going to now apply the stencil. So I want to just do this as best as I can to line everything up. So how I'm going to approach this is like so. It may be wiser to start it off like this. So this is just me kind of figuring out the placement here. Just gotta be a little bit more careful as you can see, it's not easy to work with. The stencil that is. So what I'm going to do is kind of line it up, let it place down naturally, and then I'm going to just apply the pressure, like so. Allowing it to bind and stick there all the way through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a napkin couple of shot wipes and then try and place them over like so. Hopefully this works. I'm hoping that we don't have to reprint this gigantic stencil. So I'm not moving. I'm not like smearing. I'm just pressing down. It's a lot of pressure to get this right. And this is the practice that we go through. And this is why it's worth the investment because it puts you under these sort of stresses that would arise on real human tattoos. And I'm just trying to make sure that I pretty much press everywhere and I can tell that I didn't press on the face right here, so that's not gonna show up. 
I'm hoping that it does not bleed. Then I just want to be careful when removing these so that way I don't, you know, move the stencil and slide the stencil around. And you can kind of see where you're not pressing. How I do this is I'm going to place these two on this side and then pull it up piece by piece. So, so far so good. I'm going to move these a little bit and then press it down a little bit more right here prior. A little bit right here in this area. And as you see, I'm just kind of working the stencil as I go up here. Kind of just to the best of my ability. So as you can see though, we were pretty successful first try. Uh, we did great. Now I'm going to grab these right here and I'm just going to place them on top kindly. So that way I can remove any excess deodorant that may be there. Any of the excess speed stick. And I'm doing this kindly, just lay down, press softly. That's all you have to do to soak up as much excess as you can there. And we're gonna repeat that process with this side right here. So that way it just doesn't bleed any further. That's, that's what the point of this is. So that way the stencil stays as is but as you can see though, overall we are successful. There is a line right here in the middle. I'm going to grab a Q-tip so that way I can just remove those lines so that doesn't dry permanently. Okay, so there we have it. I cleaned it up as best I can. So now we have a completely workable stencil. From here on out, I need to be very patient and allow this to dry. So I'm going to approach it the same way that I've always approached the Yolong tattoo skins. And I'm going to allow this to dry for 12 to 24 hours. I'm going to come back and I'm gonna start down here and wipe a little bit away just to test it out and see if the stencil is sticking. So I'm going to allow it again to rest 12 to 24 hours. We will be back to proceed with doing this tattoo. Okay, so the stencil has been sitting for about maybe 12 to 14 hours, give or take, somewhere around there. I'm going to test out a little piece over here and see if it's stuck to the silicone skin. And I did a smaller time frame simply because I don't know how this silicone skin behaves. And I don't want the stencil to dry on too, too dark. So it looks as though we may be able to remove a, the darker portion of the stencil. It may be a little bit darker over what I would prefer, but we're gonna get there when we get there. So we are now going to remove the entire stencil. To do so, I'm going to get a chunk of Vaseline and just put it over the entire thing.
So as you can see, we have a lighter shade of the stencil here. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference from the before and after. However, it is lighter. It is a lot lighter. It's still darker than what I would have wanted it to be. However, for this specific bigger size tattoo, that may not be a bad thing. We are going to go right over the lines anyway. We are going to make them that bold. So the purple shouldn't pop up. The purple outline here, the purple stencil shouldn't pop up. And that's a big uh, issue for me because I would like to have this for presentation. You can hang it on the wall or something to that extent. So we will find out how the skin behaves, how it performs, if the stencil is going to show up when we are done. We will find out all of that in this video here. Overall though, the skin seems fairly easy to work with. As you can see, it wasn't hard to clean up. It's just a big amount of space that I had to really work in and get the purple out. And as you can see, there's still some spots that I can work out. But overall though, I do like the way that the skin behaves. This one, it dries a lot faster than the previous skins that I used that I've noticed. It doesn't take 24 hours. So you can probably leave this on for about maybe four to eight hours and get the session going. I probably should have left it on maybe for about four to eight hours to get it a little bit lighter. However, it is what it is. I am not mad at it at all. Cause again, I'm going to match the configuration to the actual lining here. So I'm not upset with this. I am excited to get into tattooing. I'm eager to see how the excess ink wipes off and how it stains. I'm hoping that it doesn't stain. So again, we're taking this practice skin throughout a series of tests here. And by the end of this video, we will know if this is a right investment for us. But as you can see, it's dry. There is no more working it out. It's there. So what we can do now is begin the tattoo. Okay, so for this specific tattoo, I'm going to be using a combination of the Ambition Soldier tattoo machine, and I'm going to be using the CNC X1 tattoo machine as well. We will get to wrapping this one here shortly. I'm going to be pushing different round shaders to begin with. So the outline I'm going to do with an 18 round shader, a standard as you can see right here, a long taper, this specific cartridge right here, which is the 18 round shader. So I'm going to be using these round shaders right here to effectively do this tattoo. I will bring you all up close as I'm pulling lines. We're going to test out the skin. We're going to see how it cleans up. We're going to see how it accepts the ink. We're going to do the entire nine. So by the end of this video, you will have a good impression as to whether or not this skin will be good for you or not. So let me proceed to wrap the X1 so we can proceed and get this tattoo done. I'm going to begin and we're just going to start pulling lines here. I'm going to start with the CNC X1 and I'm going to begin just starting right here and working my way through the tattoo as I normally would. So let's proceed accordingly. And this is going to be a precision needle right here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these. Precision needles, standard 18 round shader, long taper. And I am using the Bronk wireless power supply. I'm going to be pushing this needle at eight volts as that's where it seems happiest. So here's our first pull. Let's see how it goes. So it wasn't too bad. I do notice that the skin is a bit tougher now, just allow me to kind of work with it a bit here so I can give you my opinion on this. So the skin wipes away ink easily, so it's gonna be easy to work with. From here on out, I kind of feel 
that it pretty much passes all the fundamental tests that I would want out of a fake skin. Now, I think the felt of it is due to the thickness because again, it is dual sided. So I am considering that. And as you can see, there is nothing showing up on the other side whatsoever, which is what we want. So this is genuinely going to be good for two entire sessions. I am going to do another back piece on the other side and I may bring a review on how I will approach that. But for this specific skin, I'm going to keep the review to the skin and let you all know how it feels, how I like it, how it performs. Now, the way that the skin accepts ink is going to be determined by your technical approach. Make sure you're matching your voltage to your hand speed. Right now I'm running at 8.3 volts. And I'm using the CNC X1. This is very nice. Well, I genuinely like the way that this mat feels. This is going to be a long session. I'm genuinely going to learn a lot. Now, this is the biggest configuration that I had available to me. So I'm just going to have to make it work and do what I can uh, for these bigger areas like out here. But for the inside, I believe like some of the other round shaders are going to do just fine. So we are going to get pretty diverse here. Let me pull a couple of more lines and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you up close here so that way you guys can see the mat up close. So the skin definitely has resistance, but in terms of like accepting the ink, I'm getting a bit comfortable with it. And I, it appears as though I'm getting to get these one pass lines pretty easily now. And packing the black is not hard at all. Let me finish this little piece and I will bring you up close because it may be a bit more difficult to see from up there. Now, in terms of using the tattoo machines, I'm just going to switch accordingly to whatever feels right. Right now, the X1 feels right. For all we know, we may use this tattoo machine throughout the entire process. We do not know. So let me bring you up close here so that way you can see the skin in action up here up close. So we are up close here and I want to show you all how I am approaching this. And I want to show you how the ink accepts, I mean, how the skin accepts the ink here, rather. So just one fluid motion, as you see right there. The skin overall feels great. It doesn't feel like something that I don't want to work with. Um, I'm excited to actually finish this entire tattoo. And uh, for the other side, I actually have a great plan for that. I'm not going to mention that just yet though, or say too much on that as I want to get through this tattoo right here. But as you see though, the skin is very accepting to the ink. Like it's not hard to work with it. And this is how I'm going to approach these bigger areas. I'm just using the biggest configuration that I have available to me right now. And I'm just going back in and packing in that middle there with black as you see. 
that's how I'm going to approach pretty much these bigger areas, these bigger lines. This isn't a bad way to approach it for me specific as it gives me a little bit more control as well. Overall, I'm genuinely liking the feel. The skin is very easy to work with. I have no complaints. And as you see, I'm wiping and wiping over the stencil in the areas around it. And I'm not having any issues as well with like the stencil coming off. I don't think the stencil is gonna come off at all. I think it's pretty much going to be there the entire tattoo. for this specific skin right here. So again, right now I have no complaints. The skin is very easy to work with, for me at least, because I've used a lot of fake skins, so I'm used to how they work. And as you see, this one is a little bit uh, tougher, I guess because of the thickness, since it is that thick, um, it's a bit more to work with. However, I personally don't mind that because I get to do this twice. I get to do two full back sessions and really make the most out of this skin here. So this is just pretty much the process that I'm going to be repeating the way through the tattoo until I completed it. Very simple stuff here. The fundamentals, just A to B making sure that I take my time, follow the stencil as best as I can without creating any more space around these lines. As you see, very nice and very straightforward though, like, um, Again, no complaints here. I don't believe that we are breaking through to the other side. So as you can see, like the other side, there's nothing showing. So when I'm done, I will be able to put a stencil over the other side and do this exact same thing all over again. So for the price, this is definitely worth the investment as this is going to be hours of tattooing. I don't know how long this is going to take me to finish either. So that's why I mentioned time-lapse earlier in the video. On human skin though, having this approach, I would have been a bit more cautious, but at the same time, it would have been a bit more easier to uh, put the ink into where I needed it to, filling it in, filling the ink in on human skin with this round shader would have been a bit more easier. This entire tattoo, I'm just literally going to take my time. I'm not going to rush it at all.
so very nice though overall I'm, I'm i'm liking the way this is performing i'm liking this skin this is going to be a cool experience i can definitely see this teaching me a couple of things as in terms of like you know practicing my patience every line i pull i have that confidence not only that doing larger scale tattoos like this this is the first time i've done a tattoo of this size and i have the opportunity because of this skin right here and again this is from yolong tattoo I will leave links in the description below for you. So very nice what i want to do is switch over to time lapse mode so that way this can go by a bit swifter here as this is going to definitely be a long tattoo you overall get the idea here of how the ink is accepted on the skin how the skin accepts the ink here i'm just going in and tuning everything up here finish this little piece and we will switch over to time lapse mode.
So as you can see, we are now done with the outline and it came out great. I feel the lines are nice and saturated. The skin was a lot of fun to work with, or it is a lot of fun to work with. It's not difficult at all. It doesn't smudge. So when there is ink, as you saw in the time lapse, I would just simply wipe away per usual with some simple Vaseline and the excess ink would come right off. The skin was easy to saturate. As you see, the lines are nice and bold very nice and saturated and consistent lines overall so this skin right now is definitely going to get a thumbs up and five stars from me right now i want to see if it accepts shading so we're going to get a little bit into shading i'm not certain if i'm going to shade the entire thing on camera here if we're going to just do a little bits and pieces to get the idea just so that way the point gets across as i do understand this video is going into an hour plus now as you can see though, on the back side, there is nothing showing. So I will be able to use this whole other side for a completely different session. So this is definitely well worth the investment. You really do get the most for your dollar here when investing into these Yolong skins. And granted, it is like a silicone material. So it's not very, very soft and it's not too hard. So you just have to just you will just have to adjust accordingly upon you know tattooing it, pulling your lines, whatever it is that you are going to do, just simply adjust accordingly, and you will be able to get a tattooing session under your belt from the Yolong skin that I am demonstrating right here in this video. Overall, it's getting a thumbs up from me. Let's go ahead and set the camera up and let's jump into shading and let's check out the shading. Okay, so we are up close now, and I definitely want to test the shading with you all real time here, so that way you can see. I'm going to be using the So Long Tattoo EM139 Tattoo Machine, along with the CNC Standard 3 Round Liner for shading of the Dragon Scales here. I'm not going to go for a typical Japanese style approach. I'm going to go with some stippling here, as that's what I want to do here for this. And it would be easier for me to get into these tight spots with this needle configuration. It may take a bit more time, however... I may be more happy with the results. So I am going in with straight black and I'm running at 5.5 volts right now. And I'm just using the very tip of my needle just to see how accepting the skin is. And again, I'm using straight black ink. So if the skin takes the black a bit quicker than what I would like, I'm going to have to make some sort of gray wash so that way I go I don't go too dark quickly and ruin the tattoo and that's another fundamental on using the tip of your needle using the tip of the needle would allow me to control the shading a lot more but from what I am looking at it's definitely looking as though the skin is accepting of shading which is a good thing I definitely do see a shade here going and it's looking nice let me actually place this over here so it doesn't wobble when I'm tattooing. So as you see, the shading is very nice. It does shade, so it's accepting of shading as well as lining, which is a good thing because anytime I'm using a fake practice silicone skin, I would want it to be accepting of shading and lining, at least the essentials, so that way we can get a full session under our belt. So we can, you know, you know outline a tattoo and shade and pretty much run the entire nine as if it was a real client. And this skin right here is definitely giving me that feel. As you see, I'm going to leave a negative rim as best I can around there just because I feel like that would allow the tattoo to pop the most there. And that is going to be fully subjective. Overall though, it is shading nice. I may try out a mag on the bigger spots of the shading, maybe a smaller like seven round mag or something to this extent, five round mag. I may switch here shortly, but if I do switch, I'm going to definitely let you all know upon, upon the switch there but overall though the skin is definitely accepting of shading i'm going to begin and just kind of get into shading here and i'm going to get as far as i can on the scales so we are going to be switching back to a time lapse time lapse mode just for sake of time here so that way this video is not running on three four hours long for the review however i do try i do want to try and show you all the complete finished product so we can give you an idea so allow me to switch you back over to the time lapse mode and when i get as far as i can get with the shading we will go ahead and come back i know i stated i was going to go to the time lapse however i put in a cnc police five round mag as you can see right here and i'm going to just test out some shading with this specific configuration just to see how it feels as well Thank <laughs> you. 
and I'm going to use that standard three round liner for the tighter areas however for the bigger areas I think that this configuration is going to work out fine as you can see this is probably going to be a lot more better for for the skin but I just wanted to go ahead and let you all know before we switch over to the time lapse that I'm also going to be using the five round mag by the CNC police five round mag
so we are back and unfortunately the client did tap out however as you can see we came out with a great tattoo this yolong practice silicone slab is definitely well worth the investment off the bat right now i'm going to tell you i'm giving this a five stars and a two thumbs up i feel like i learned a lot throughout this process granted this is the biggest tattoo that i have done today and it's almost the size or if not the size of an entire back so i'm very happy though with the results i'm very happy with how i feel now again i do feel like i got some knowledge under my belt i do feel like i could make more efficient and effective larger scale stencils for these tattoos I do feel that I could apply stencils better to, you know, uh, larger scale tattoos. And I also do feel like I can put in lines better for larger scale tattoos and just overall approach a larger scale tattoo with more, I guess, um, meticulous decisions i feel like now i'm more equipped to do better and larger tattoos i'm very excited that i also get the back of the silicone skin so i'm just going to go ahead and clean off this excess uh ink right here and i'm going to put on another stencil and as you can see we have an entire another canvas right here to work with so i can do two full-size back pieces with this one silicone slab that alone makes this well worth the investment i also want to bring this up close and i want to show you all the lines up close and the shading like up close here so that way you can see the skin has no damages or anything like that it's not beat up it's not torn or nothing like that it held its integrity the entire way I'm very happy with how this skin accepts lining and shading. And as you can see though, we have nice soft shading and some really dense lining right there or really nice, thick, saturated lines. But as you can see, real nice soft shades. I do love the way that this tattoo came out. I do love overall the entire experience that I had with this specific silicone skin. I cannot exaggerate or exhaust, I cannot exhaust how much that this is well worth the investment. I will be investing into these more so that way I can do a few more uh, back size pieces. Not only that, I'm going to hang these up because the tattoos look great. If you're happy with the results, you can go ahead and hang it up, have it as a, you know, have it as a part of your portfolio. I feel like this is also a great investment for that. All in all, as you can see, the tattoo came out great. The skin is capable of lining, capable of shading, and then some. If you have any questions, if I didn't touch base on anything specific that you may have wanted to know on your end, please don't hesitate. Feel free to drop it in the comments below, and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, be sure to go ahead and give me a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as I have social medias all under the same name, at Daniel Yuck, D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C. I would genuinely appreciate the support on there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing you more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You have a great day.